giving away your money without seeing any performance data is a bad way to make Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And we're going to talk about NVIDIA and this interesting article that I came across. Um, I haven't read it yet. I just saw the title and I thought this is interesting because, well, the graphics card that I have on my computer is an NVIDIA and I'm looking at... Uh, rebuilding my i7 computer because the processor died i tested everything because i thought it was the motherboard at first well first i thought it was the power supply and i got a new power supply and nope uh same thing and uh just tore everything down turns out it's the uh it's the processor because i even got another motherboard so anyway <clears throat> i want i'm looking at getting a 1070 Ti is what I'm looking to do, um, mainly to be used for my flight simulator series. Anyhow, um, let's take a look at this. So NVIDIA's core business is struggling with less graphically demanding games, a glut of cheap cards, and a lack of interest in its new technologies. Now this may be um, interesting or not to you and I don't know if this is uh, related but take a look at uh, Nvidia's stock which is kind of half off the screen there you can't even see it uh, let's see here let's just kind of drag this over here there we go this, this is a interactive uh, rambling show so here is the stock for that's only one day we need to move out a little bit here so for one year, it has been going down. Now, from what I understand, it's been making a sharp turn because I think the whole cryptocurrency thing, from what I read, maybe I should find an article and, and do a, a show about it. That might be a good idea. But the whole cryptocurrency thing apparently has kind of fizzled out. Um, like either there's not a lot left of mine or something but all the graphics cards that see they had a s steep climb here look at this and that's a bear market right there that is one heck of a drop almost half of its value look at that nearly went up to about 300 but uh so I am thinking that this drop is a result of that crypto uh, currency mining where people aren't just buying graphics cards now to, to, to do it, but it may also have to do with what this article is talking about, where people just aren't buying these new graphics cards because uh, what they have is working just fine for them. Heck, I have a GTX 760, and for the most part, it does what I need. I mean, I don't, you know, the reason why I want a fast graphics card is for um, Flight Simulator 10 uh, to make it smoother. Uh, having an i7 would help. <laughs> I'm using an i5 backup, but also X-Plane so I can max those out because uh, I'm doing videos with them and I like it to be rather smooth and presentable. Um, Speaking of stocks, I actually own uh, a couple of shares in NVIDIA recently. Um, since it's dropped, I bought a couple of shares. <clears throat> and uh, if it goes down, well, it goes down. I don't think NVIDIA is going anywhere. I mean, they are a big company when it comes to graphics cards. So uh, that's the thing with stock. If there's a company that you like... If it goes down, what do you do? You keep adding more to your portfolio. Um, 
And well, since these are $144 a share, uh, I buy like one at a time. <laughs> so hey, if, if, if one share drops like $20, I only lost $20. And, and they don't expire, it's not like options. But yeah, it gets lower, throw another one on there. You know, eventually it's gonna whoop, go right back up, at least for NVIDIA. And this is just a really, um, but also another reason why this came down too was a lot, the market itself was dropping like a rock too. So that didn't help. Anyway, we're not here to talk about stock. We are here to talk about why are people not buying it? So yeah, so here stock recently plummeted after the chip maker and we saw that. All right. So glad we took a look at that. Um, I need to move this window back over. Well, I may not have to. I'm only blocking part of the screen there. Anyways, um, the chip maker slashed its fourth quarter revenue guidance from about $2.7 billion to $2.2. NVIDIA attributed the drop, which would represent a 24% annual decline to soft demand for its data center and gaming CPUs. NVIDIA also admitted that sales of its new Turing GPUs were lower than expected. Well, yeah, a lot of people have 1070 and 1080 TIs and are pretty happy with them. And slashed its non-GAAP gross margin gap. Guidance from a midpoint of, this is a lot of techno mumbo jumbo stuff here. It's like none of this stuff really means anything to me. I just, you know, put it in English, man. Uh, simply put, NVIDIA told investors to brace for its worst quarter in years. <laughs> That's exactly what you want to tell your investors. This is going to be a bad year. Whoop, sell! <laughs> uh, especially if you have a lot. If you have a lot, it's time to take some of that money off of the table. Uh, the soft demand for its Turing GPUs was particularly disappointing. Investors expected sales of the newer chips to offset some of the inventory issues with its older Pascal GPUs, which were hit with a supply glut after the crypto mining bubble popped. Pop! Pop the bubble! During the third quarter, NVIDIA's gaming revenue, which accounted for 55% of its top line, Rose 13% annually, but fell 2%. Math. <laughs> During last quarter's conference call, CEO Jensen Huang stated that it would take one or two quarters. Quarters. Yeah. Like the little silver coin things. Probably not. To stabilize its gaming GPU business. However, NVIDIA's ugly guidance cut indicates that it could take much longer. Who's the motley fool? Who's the motley crew? Girls, girls, girls. Uh, the world's top PC games. Oh, so here are the reasons. <laughs> here are the three reasons why people aren't buying them. Uh, the world's top PC games don't require powerful GPUs. Unless you're doing 4K gaming, then it might. But who does 4K gaming and why? I mean, if you're on a, like, a little monitor, I don't really need 4K gaming, I don't think. I, I think... Only if you've got like a big screen on your wall, you probably would would want 4K there, so that way it's crisp and clear. But on a little monitor, I don't really need it. Uh, in recent years, many core PC gamers pivoted away from graphically demanding AAA games toward multi-platform esports titles with lower GPU requirements, or they went to indie games because a lot of these so-called AAA games are released. Uh, uh, incomplete. That is my thing here. Uh, so they... Uh, Ten Cents League of Leg Legends, which is nearly a decade old, remains the top core PC game in the world. Uh, then there's Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Fortnite. <clears throat> and hey, Minecraft is still a thing. You don't really need a... <laughs> 1080 Ti for that, unless you have like shaders. You know, if you have shaders and you're like wanting to push the uh, the uh, the view, like was it like 30, 64 
blocks or out or something. Anyway, um, other popular port. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it mentions Minecraft right there. Uh, Activision Blizzard's Overwatch and World of Warcraft. Is is this still a thing? Is that still a thing? I thought I read somewhere where it's just not as popular anymore. Uh, and then Grand Theft Auto V. These games all run like butter on NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs. Number two, gamers are postponing their upgrades. As a result, gamers are postponing their upgrades or simply buying used Pascal GPUs, which flooded the market after the crypto bubble popped. New Zoo recently reported that the three most popular GPUs are the GTX 1060, 1050 Ti, and the 1070. So I don't know about the 1060. If you're not playing any, or heck, the 1050. Um, although they'd be cheap, but no, I'm looking at the 1070 is what I'm looking at. Uh, Mid-range uh, GTX 1060, which holds a 20% market share among gamers, costs 2 to 200 to 250. Um, the lower end 1050 Ti costs about 150, and the higher end 1070. What well, you're not going to no the 1080 is the higher end anyway. 350 to 400. Uh, yeah, the 1080 is like insanely expensive, like around 900 to a thousand dollars or more. Um, and I just I don't have that kind of money. I, kind of don't have that money either um but and i did some research and people were there's even videos about it too where people were just saying you know you can't really tell the difference that much between a 1070 and a 1080 although there is a difference if you have like a one of those they have it where they show the counters and stuff and the frame frames per second and the 1080 is like twice as fast but your eye only processes so much, so it's really not worth, you know, 600 extra dollars, you know, unless you're, you know, drowning in money. Send me some. Uh, NVIDIA also exas exacerbated the problem. What? Oh, don't use that word. The problem by challenging AMD and the low-end market with sub $150 cards like the GTX 1050 and 1030 last year. That strategy boosted NVIDIA's market share and discrete GPUs from 72... More math! <laughs> uh, therefore, NVIDIA's attempt to lure away budgets conscious gamers from AMD paid off. But it was also a clear admission that most gamers didn't need higher-end cards. That's why the soft demand for it. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Let's take a look at AMD. Hey, let's move this screen back over here. And let's look at AMD stock. Now, see, now they're not doing so bad. Uh, it looks like they're at a support level right around here. Um, they peaked just just like everyone else. Now, see, you want to buy some stock. That, this this is affordable. Twenty four dollars a share. Pick up five. Pick up five shares for for a hundred dollars. I might actually do that. Um, so, well, yeah, it looks doesn't look like it's really affected them too much. All right, so a lack of killer features is number three. The Turing GPUs, keep in mind the Turing ones are the newer ones that are out, like the 2080 and the 2070. Uh, they offer more CUDA cores, Barracuda, and memory bandwidth than Pascal GPUs. But the most notable and widely hyped upgrade was the addition of ray tracing. A technology that lets developers add real-time cinematic lighting and shadows to objects. They make that sound new. Ray tracing has been a while, around for a while. That, that's like the 3D imaging stuff. They called it ray tracing. So, And what exactly does real-time... Don't they already have things coming out that has 
lighting and shadow. What am I missing here? I mean, this sounds like they're acting like something's new, and I don't see how this is new. Anyway, uh, yet only a handful of games currently support ray tracing, and none of them convinced gamers, oh, you know what, I remember reading something that if games were ray traced, I guess maybe they're not exactly ray traced. Because usually when you do like a, uh, a film or an animation, it has to render it out frame by frame. And I guess with games, it can't render it that quickly. So I guess that kind of makes sense now that I think about it. Man, first time I read Ray Tracing, it was with the Commodore Amiga. <laughs> I still have my very first uh, 3D program. I thought it, I thought I forgot what it was called. My 3D ray, ray tracing program. Man, and and doing one uh, a pic a ray trace picture, it was exciting. I got it done in like three days. Sometimes it was a week. <laughs> Uh, because the because it would render it and you'd see this the line would be like <laughs> one line at a time it would be really uh, and I'm being a little bit more faster than what it was but yeah <laughs> uh, anyway NVIDIA admits that customers may have delayed their purchase while waiting for lower price points and further demonstrations of RTX technology and games. Oh, yeah, you think? NVIDIA will report its fourth quarter earnings, earnings, earnings on February 14th, Valentine's Day, which should provide a clearer picture of the challenges facing its core gaming business. Well, if you don't have candy hearts to offer, then I don't know what to tell you. I personally think that NVIDIA can't overcome its gaming challenges in one or two quarters. See, there's the quarters again. Toss a couple of quarters on there, you know, 50 cents or 10 cent. Well, they mentioned 10 cent up here. I don't know. Anyway, um, Motley, Motley Crue co-founders, Tom and David, should you buy it? Um, anyway. <laughs> So that is NVIDIA um, as far as uh, what's going on. Uh, hey, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you probably have NVIDIA cards um, or you're watching this on your phone, which doesn't have an NVIDIA card in it. Otherwise, it'd probably be a really big phone. I bet you it'd be a badass phone, though. Um, what if you have an NVIDIA card in your computer? And I know probably most of you do because uh, when I look at the analytics of my channel, most people who watch my uh, channel have are using it on desktop computers. But anyway, what graphics card do you have? Um, I have a 760. I think it's a 760. I'm trying to make sure I'm not dyslexic and was in 670, but no, I think it's a 760. But anyway, what kind of NVIDIA card do you have? Do you have something lower, higher? Do you have a 1080 Ti or 1070? Or hey, let me know. Let me know what you think. And other than that, that's it for this rambling session. And I hope to see you on the next one. Be sure to subscribe so you know when a new video comes out. And it's just your way of showing me that you care <laughs> and caring is sharing and sharing is caring. <laughs>